Hey everybody, welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. We are back. Sorry I was off last week, it was a little chaotic. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. And welcome, if this is your first time here, we talk all things sewing. If you want to, if that's something you're interested in, feel free to subscribe to this channel. I put out a video every Thursday and I try to have a live show every, uh, every Sunday. Um, apologize for last week, uh, but let's get into the show. So I thought it would be interesting for us today to talk about all the different types of sewing I know when you're just getting started. A lot of people don't know the differences between, say, needlepoint, embroidery, quilting, garment construction. People tend to all lump them into kind of the same category as just sewing. They even put knitting in there, crocheting, even though they're totally different things. So I wanted to kind of ask you guys um, what what kind of what form of sewing you first started uh, started with like how did you get into it also what forms of sewing have you segued into sort of like the you know sort of like a gateway a uh, gateway into sewing right or the rabbit hole or whatever else you want to call it and also if there's any types of sewing you have not tried yet but would like to um, i'd love to hear your opinions um, obviously i have not done every different type of sewing myself. Um, I still consider myself sort of an advanced beginner. Uh, so again, if you're interested in sewing and you don't know much about it, uh, stay with us because every week we do have people of all different skill ranges, ages, genders, walks of life joining us in this conversation. So it's definitely a place for us to connect and, uh, and be part of the sewing community. So thank you guys so much. Um, and I cannot believe it's Oh my, like Thanksgiving is coming really fast. Um, so I think as we get into the holidays, I also want to share some deals I find and maybe, maybe around Black Friday, we can, you know, maybe we can just do a whole episode and I can kind of track down some, because I'm, I'm looking forward to these Amazon lightning deals. I want to be honest with you. I'm going to be on the lookout. So maybe I can share some Amazon lightning deals that I find or deals of the day, that sort of thing. Um, because I know a lot of us are trying to shop for the holidays or shop for ourselves if you're looking for a new sewing machine or just looking for a good deal. Um, I tend to have a pretty good Hawkeye. And uh, yeah, so, and I apologize guys, I do not have the prom mug, but this this episode is uh, brought to you by GT Diet Cola, which is available at Aldi, one of my favorite stores of all time. And in fact, I think on one of the flyers, I saw they are selling, they were supposed to be selling this week that mini sewing machine. Now I went to two locations in the past week. I did not, and I was on the lookout for it because it was advertised for like $12.99. And those mini sewing machines, you know, like the purple and white one, they're um, typically like, I think like, tw like $20, $30. So I thought that seemed like a pretty good deal. And I'm going to be honest, if I saw one, I was going to pick one up and maybe do a review on it, but I couldn't find any. Um, I did get some other really random stuff. Um, the one thing about Aldi I noticed is that they don't sell diet soda in two liters. They only sell diet soda in cans, hence the cans. I also this week have a bowl of popcorn. I'm going to try not to eat too much during this show because um, I don't think you really want to, you probably don't really want to hear that. Uh, and let me pop up the chat window so we can so we can get going. We've got Sterling here. Oh yes, first and uh, all right. I'm probably gonna really butcher your name. Is it? All right. It's like Delali. We got Amber and Amber. Welcome, Amber. And I connected through a uh, the business boutique Facebook page, I believe. Um, Amber has her own business called Milk and Sugar Baby. And we've got Kate here from Vancouver. Amber's got the first comment. I jumped into garment sewing because I wanted to make a costume for my son. Used a simplicity children's pattern, pajamas pattern as my base. It was challenging, but once I knew I, I once I knew I could do more things, and that is, I think that's what a lot of us find is that you you make one thing and you're like, wow, I did it. Wasn't too bad, you know. It looks okay, and then you can you it sort of builds your confidence, and then you can move on to other things. And uh, so yeah, let me know what how you got into sewing. Um, and I, obviously I'm not an expert on all of these forms of sewing. I just wanted to let you know offhand. Um, but I do, I, I find it a little frustrating as someone who does so when people don't, when people kind of assume they're all the same, or if you do one, then you must do the other. Um, but let me tick off. Oh, and also I wanted to share. All right. Well, first, actually first, let me, let me show you the poll results from last week or from two weeks ago now. So we had talked about, um, I shared some budget sewing machines I found for under $150, all available on Amazon. 
And this was your response to what's your top budget for a sewing machine? Uh, seven, you, seven of you, or 38%, said $300. Five of you, or 27%, said $500. Uh, we had four of you said that it was... Oh, okay, okay, and these are the most popular responses. So it's not going by monetary order. Uh, four of you, or 22%, said $2,500 and up. Uh, one of you, or 5%, said $100 would be your top budget. And uh, one of, another one of you, or 5%, said $1,000 would be your top budget. So it seems like about a quarter of you, a little little under a quarter of you, did do want to spend or have spent over $2,500. But it seems like at least, like more, definitely more than half of the people who responded had less than, had a budget of less than $1,000. So like about, actually about 75% when you, when you add it all up. So about 75% of you don't want, you know, just don't want to spend over $1,000 and about a quarter, 22% will spend over $2,500. I think that's very interesting. And I think that's definitely something for the sewing machine industry and the sewing industry to keep in mind is that a lot of us seem to be on a budget and it, if you've, you know, been sewing for any amount of time, you can see how expensive some of this stuff can get and how easy it is to drop a lot of cash on this obsession. And I'm not calling sewing a hobby because I really don't believe it is a hobby. Sewing is a way of life. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, let me pop up the chat window so we can see everybody's comments here. All right. So we got, we've got uh, Tony here. Thank you for this topic. I'm... I am almost an almost lifetime historical costumer. That's awesome. A lifetime historical costumer, but would like to get into cosplay. And you know, Tony, those are two areas that I really have no experience in myself. It looks really cool. Um, I think from, from my viewpoint, it looks complicated. And uh, I tend to get, like, my eyes tend to glaze over when things get really complicated. So I think I need to, I do need, think I need to branch out and expand my skill set. I don't know if I would go like full scale into something really fancy right away. I've also not done a lot of like couture sewing. I have a few craftsy classes, but it's just not, it's just not something that I've been able to really master at all. And I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm good with my, with my level. I would like to be able to do more obviously. Uh, but for Tony who does historical costumes, um, and if you are, a, and, and actually this sort of topic was suggested, I would like to give a shout out to Liz Williamson, one of our viewers, and she's become a friend. She lives in O-Town, Orlando, uh, one of my, a well, uh, very cool city in Florida. And she had a good idea for a show just to talk about the different areas of sewing. There's tradi more traditional forms of sewing and now these more modern um, forms like the cosplay that are becoming very popular, especially among the younger crowd. So I, and you know, I'm down with anything that gets younger people interested in sewing. So if they want to, you know, dress up like their favorite anime character, video game person, somebody from Mar the Marvel Comics universe and go to Comic-Con, I think that's awesome. And I do think, you know, the, whatever we can do to encourage those people and to also get new folks interested, I think, you know, I'm, I'm totally, I think that would be amazing. I've got a, another comment from, from, we got one from Margaret, gotten to sewing the same way as Amber, so making some costumes for stuff for her, her kids. Kirsten started sewing Barbie clothes for my mom's scraps at about three to four years old. And Kirsten, I kind of started the same way you did. I took like, like my mom sewed a little bit and my grandma sewed a bit. Um, I wouldn't say ne either of them really like taught me. Um, and I remember just getting really frustrated with my mom's sewing machine, but that was sort of the same thing. I would mostly hand sew. I would take like pairs of pantyhose or socks and use them to make like Barbie dresses or something like that. Um, and I, I did, so, you know, I don't know. I was scared of the sewing machine, but I, I really enjoyed hand sewing at the time. I think I also made one of those like rug loop kits, you know, where you, where it comes with those yarns that you have to pull through. So I've, I've dabbled with that, but I wouldn't say I was serious about sewing until I was after age, over age 30. So I think I'm probably kind of old for, I don't know. I felt like I was, I was old, old on the older side when I started. I don't know. I've got a uh, Tony. I got into sewing to make beautiful, big, beautiful Elizabethan dresses and then branched out. I think most historical costumers are self-taught because we aren't into the make and apron beginning classes. And Tony, like, how did you, ma I just want to know, like, for someone that does 
more complicated sewing, like, the costumes or cosplay or, like, reproduction stuff. How, what, do you have any tips for someone, you know, people like me who haven't done it that, you know, might, that might be helpful? Um, because when I see those projects, they seem so daunting. I don't, I don't feel like I can handle it. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I haven't really tried those types of things before. So, I don't know. Um, Sterling, have you heard of Craftsy Unlimited since we were on top of, on the topic of budgie? You know, Sterling, I was on the Craftsy website the other day and I didn't see that. Let me check it out. So is this part of their new, like, NBC, um, Unlimited thing? Because I know they were going to be doing that. Um, if so, okay, okay, oh, okay. So apparently, it looks like, let's see here. According to craftindustryalliance.org, it looks like Craftsy will offer a subscription model in 2018. Okay, oh, and here is, let's see here. So it looks like next year. So I guess if you were thinking about buying a Craftsy class, maybe hold off until next year when you can get unlimited access to all the classes. Uh, I'm a little bit bummed because I just bought some classes a few, probably about a month ago. Uh, but you know what? That's... So, I mean, and I, from what I understand, I think you'll still be able to access the classes you have, but obviously for, for new people, um, cause I was actually, so here's, I love sewing, but I've actually been really, really intrigued by the baking classes, particularly cookie decorating. I don't know why, but in the past few weeks, I've been watching a lot of videos about cookie decorating, like how to make royal icing and how to flood the cookie. And I really want to try it. So I think I might do that. I might make some videos too about it on my other channel, Gen Talks Forever. If you haven't subscribed there yet um, and you like non-sewing videos or you just think I'm weird or interesting, I don't know, feel free to subscribe. I, I haven't put out a video there in a while, but um, as a sneak peek, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more content there as well um, in 2018. So a lot's gonna happen in 2018 apparently. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of curious to see about this Craftsy Unlimited because you know what, I actually might do it just because of the fact that, you know, there's a lot of classes that I'm still interested in. Um, okay, so it says, apparently in a letter signed by CEO John Levesay, and I'll link this to you guys. Um, I have talked to Abby Glassenberg before. Um, Kirsten, yeah, let's see here, and I'm linking to the article on the blog. It looks pretty helpful. Uh, so I guess they're letting the... Um, Oh, okay, so it looks like you can do, it looks like you can do, you can do either, according to this, this article. Um, let's see, Cla okay, so Craftsy will be adding an additional membership option, not taking away the a la carte purchasing option. So it looks like you'll be able to do both. So you'll be able to either, if you want to continue paying a la carte, you will be. And if you want to do this all in unlimited subscription, I'm kind of wondering about the price for that. Like, I wonder what... Yeah, I'm curious too, Sutherland, on uh, Sterling Sutherland, on how much this will cost. Okay, so it says the model is going to be similar to Creative Bug, and I actually don't have Creative Bug. Um, okay, membership will definitely be more than two dollars a month. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of wondering. My all right, so here's my thing. So, all right, Kate, Gen Talks Forever is a who, and Kate, um, obviously the the name of the channel is is very evident of what kind of personality I am. Um, I talk a lot. So I thought that was a good name for me that fits. Um, I could honestly talk. I uh, probably, I kind of want to do a live stream just to see how long I can go without running out of things to talk about. And I don't think it's possible. Um, I talk a lot. Yeah, it's, it, that's just the way it is. Um, but I'm kind of curious too as to how my guess, so Netflix, which has tons of original programming and tons of, they only charge like 11 or $12, was it like 11, $9.99 or $11.99 a month? So I would say if Craftsy wants to be competitive, they're going to have to charge under $15 a month to, because there's so many, they're competing with so many other subscription-based services. You've got like Hulu, you've got Netflix, you've got Amazon Prime. Also, there's a lot of creators that do pa Patreon now. So I think in order to, I really think that in order to make this appealing to consumers, I, I think it's going to have to be under $15 a month, $15 a month, um, which if you buy a lot of craft, if you buy a lot of craftsy classes, I think it would even out 
if you only buy like one or two a year, I would say probably not. Because think about it, if they charge $10 a month, it's going to be $120 a year, which at that point is more expensive than Amazon Prime. And you get Amazon Prime Video, which has a lot of original programming. I mean, Amazon and Netflix are dropping millions and millions of dollars on original programming. So if they've got that kind of budget and they're only charging people, you know, 11 or $12 a month, I don't see how Craftsy could justify to consumers paying more than more than Hulu, Netflix, or Amazon Prime. Oh, and you're also competing with like the Showtimes, the Stars, HBO Go. And I think HBO Go charges like 14 or 15 dollars. Was it like 14.99 a month? So I don't see Craftsy really be being able to make it appealing to people if they charge over $15 a month because that seems to be the going rate for all these subscription-based services is about $15 or less. So I think it's, I don't know, if I had to guess, I would say, I would say $12.99, I would say $12.99 to $15 a month. I could be totally wrong. I guess we'll see in uh, 2018. Um, and also, it's not like Craftsy's hurting for money. They, you know, NBC Universal is a very large company. So I imagine the cost of producing this content will actually go down because these people can use all of the NBC resources for the studios and for marketing. So I feel like Craftsy, the cost of producing these classes would actually go down just knowing what I do about, about pr producing videos because they will be able to streamline a lot of these processes. Um, I don't know. That's that's my opinion. I could be I could be off. I don't know, but um, I'm curious to see how much they're gonna charge. I don't know. But anyways, if you're interested in Craftsy classes, I do have a link in the description. Ah, I have a link in the description box, and uh, you know, and I am a Craftsy affiliate. Um, as I mentioned before, I like some of the classes. Some of them uh, haven't been too crazy about. It really depends on the instructor, I think. Um, so that's why. And I was telling someone else this. You need to watch the the trailers. If you like the instructor's personality and energy, it might be a safe bet. Also, look at the reviews. Um, but some of them, they, they're kind of monotone and they sound like dead air. Like, hi, you know, I'm Jen. And in this class, we will be, you know. And that's not really my vibe. So those kinds of instructors just don't resonate with me. Um, but that's the thing, like there's something for everybody. So um, if you want to check it out, there's a link down below in the description box to Craftsy's website. And yeah, so I guess in 2018, we are going to find out uh, how much this costs. But if they charged over $15 a month, I would be really shocked. Also, maybe they'll give a discount if you do a yearly subscription versus a monthly subscription. Like maybe monthly, it'll be, maybe monthly, it'll be like, I don't know. Monthly, it might be like $15 a month, but if you sign up for a whole year and prepay, maybe it'll be $10 to $12. I don't know. Uh, Craftsy is not the same as Hulu, but Sherry, the great course is more of a competitor. But here's the thing, though. Hulu and Hulu and Amazon and Netflix, those productions they put on are super expensive. So, like, the classes, even though you're paying the... The Craftsy has to pay the instructors... Producing Craftsy classes is not nearly as expensive as producing like The Handmaid's Tale or House of Cards. So you have to keep in mind that these video services like Amazon, HBO, you know, and Hulu, to produce a, to produce a scripted program like those, it costs a lot more than a Craftsy. It costs, it, it has to cost a lot more than a Craftsy class does to produce. I'm absolutely sure of that. Um... So that's why I don't really see, I don't really see Craftsy charging more than that because you're, and that's the thing, like Craftsy's not just competing with, Craftsy's not just competing with other online classes. It's a form of entertainment basically. And you're also competing with people's wallets because if, if, if like say me, I spend, I have an Amazon Prime membership. I've also got you know, I also, I don't do Hulu. I have a Netflix account. I've got HBO Go. Um, and you only have so much of a budget every month for that sort of thing. So I know it doesn't seem like Craftsy and like Hulu might not be the same. But to the consumer, they're a lot, you know, they're uh, they're definitely in the same category as far as what you're spending your money on. So no, no. And, and Sherry, I definitely, I, I just don't, I just don't think, cra I don't see Craftsy being able to justify any more than $15 a month because their production costs are just not, 
not nearly as much as those others like Hulu and Netflix. In fact, I think Westworld, um, which was an excellent show on HBO, I think their production and of course Game of Thrones, those shows are so expensive to produce and crafts, producing craftsy shows is just not nearly as expensive just because you're not paying for everything that goes into that production. Um, no, Sherry, and I think we're going to have to agree to disagree, but I don't, I don't think, and, and here's the thing, Craftsy is going to make up their money because right now a lot of people maybe buy Craftsy classes every few months or something, but if you have a subscription model, it's a lot more sustainable long-term just knowing your, cons because if someone's just buying the subscri subscription, you don't have to guess if they're going to buy a class next month or not. Um, so I don't know, but I would, I personally would be surprised if they charged more than $15, but I think I, I think if they, if I was in their marketing department or setting the pricing, I would give people a discount if they signed up for the whole year versus paying per month. And I've seen a lot of places do that. Like, you know, again, like Amazon prime, you can do it monthly, but they give you a discount if you do it for the whole year. Um, but yeah, but, but, and Sherry, that's the thing though, but Crap and crap, but craftsy though. The same people that are paying for HBO, like the same people that, like, say me, you know, I say I was considering getting a, a craftsy su subscription. You know, I could, there's only so many per month things I want to do. You know, I don't want to pay for 20, like, I don't want to pay for 20 a la carte monthly services like Hulu, Netflix. So if, if it's me or I'm going to budget, I'm going to be choosy, like, hey, which, which couple things am I going to do? And that's going to eat up my time. So I don't know. But I don't, I don't know. I think for me, getting this Craftsy subscription would be heavily dependent on the price. If it was $9.99 or less a month, I would be more likely to do it. If it was $15, I don't think, I, I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, I already have a lot of Craftsy classes that I want. I'm also curious to see, will Craftsy continue to offer those sale, constant sales on the classes? Or will they dial back on the sales? to get people to more go for that subscription model. So I guess we're going to see what happens. Um, but I'm very, I'm very curious. Um, but Sherry, you also have to realize Craftsy's not, Craftsy's a media company now, especially, especially since they're owned by NBC Universal. They're also going to be more able to eat the cost of that subscription because they've got NBC over them and NBC has a lot of other moneymaker ventures. So anyways, but yeah, Sterling, no, don't worry about it. That's actually a very interesting thing to talk about. And, uh, you know, I, I don't mind talking about it. And you know what? That's the good thing about having this show is that we can have a conversation about it. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of tired of forums where people are just yelling at each other or talking over each other. You know, I think I'm, I want to have a place where you can talk to people, do it in a civil way. And we've seen this with politics. People just can't like... I don't know. I think people are having a hard time having a rational discussion with someone else they disagree with. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not always the best at this, but I really want to get to a place where, you know, I can have good, productive, meaningful conversation with, with someone who doesn't necessarily sh share the same opinion. Because I think if you're the type of person that like, I think if you're the type of person that can't see other perspectives or you're not willing to listen to other perspectives, I think that's very short-sighted. And I also think, I don't know, it just, it doesn't really help you become a better person or you to gain more insight or knowledge. Um, so that's why I like doing this is because we can have this, uh, have a lively discussion. I know we're a little off topic this week, but that is okay. Um, I've got my popcorn here. Um, and I do want to share with you. Okay, so let's get into the actual show topic. And if, if you're watching later, I'm going to try to put... I'm going to, since it's almost 3.30, I'm going to try to put the timestamp in there. So if you don't want to watch Craftsy, you don't have to. Um, but let's talk about some of the different types of sewing. Obviously, there's like a garment sewing, garment construction. There's also, you know, more of the hardcore seamstress tailor types um, working mostly with clothing. Uh, there's quilting, of course. And quilting is really kind of where I got in. I didn't start off with clothes. They look too hard for me. So I started with some like small, like kind of sewing home deck quilting type projects. And I actually made a quilt before I ever made clothing. Uh, there was home deck, so you could make, you know, like curtains, window treatments, uh, bedding, you can do pillows. Um, 
cushions and of course then there's upholstery and there's I would say there's definitely a difference between home deck and upholstery um, there's cosplay there's like historical reproduction sewing uh, theatrical costumes you could put those all in one but of course they are pretty different and then of course there's hand sewing like needlepoint embroidery and cross stitch I'm not really lumpy knitting and crocheting in there because I do see that being kind of different than sewing um, but anyways, let me know what you started out with and also like, do you have a favorite? Um, I actually really like quilting. I do want to get back to that more. I've been doing more clothing lately, but I do really miss the aspects of quilting. I don't know why. I just really, um, I really like quilting, uh, quilting projects. I like making the blocks and I also kind of like designing my own. Uh, quilts so I think you know that that is definitely one of my favorite types of sewing and I find it's a little bit less frustrating than garment sewing because um, just because I don't have to worry as much about the fit that's why I also like making bags or like home decor projects is that you don't have to be as worried about tweaking things um, and that's one area that I I tend to get kind of frustrated with I guess um, okay we've got all right, Rosalik, uh, I have a lot of craft books. Okay, you're also like, my entertainment budget is limited. Um, and we've got, I just read that read and YouTube videos can teach a lot about cooking for free. And you know what? I actually, I would agree with you. A lot of things that I find on Craftsy, I can also find on YouTube. And like with the cookie decorating, I found like a several, and maybe I'll share these next week. I don't know. I found several really awesome channels for cookie decorating and I know that's like totally different but it's just something I don't know for some reason I found myself watching like 50 videos on cookie decorating and now I really want to decorate cookies even though it's probably not very good for my waistline because I'm gonna eat all the cookies but it looks so fun and I just I'm like I could totally do that although I'm not who knows I could it could be a total disaster Sterling you're only third wow you're only 13 honestly judging by your um judging by like just the way you conduct yourself I would have thought you're probably in your 20s or 30s that's kind of awesome that you're here and uh wow that's that's amazing you're doing a button-up shirt I've only done one of those and I did find it a little bit it could be a little bit frustrating and apologies I'm gonna try to move the camera a little bit um all right We've got, uh, I dream, S. Douglas, I dream of making a quilt in the future. I need to sew clothes more and more now and to get my dressmaking skills better. I dream of making a quilt in a rolling star pattern. Oh, that sounds pretty. I really do like those star patterns. I think there's something about them. They're like traditional, but they're also not too, like they, they can be modernized depending on the fabrics you pick. And I, I just really like, I like the sharp points in quilts. I don't know. Um... Sumi, I've never quilted, but it's something I want to do. I think I, I would like it for the reason you just said, fit drives me crazy. Tony, I'm interested in how this topic ties into the where, where are the new sewists topic. Are stores, issue, are stores issuing customers by not, okay, like sort of like alienating customers by not reaching out to cosplay historical non-traditional sewists? You know, I do, I, I see a little bit of that. Like Joann's now has the cosplay fabric and patterns uh, the, by Yaya Han. I think... I think the smaller businesses might be able to do more for for those people because a lot of people like there's a lot of people in cosplay that's not something I've done but there's a lot of people that are really getting into that all right uh, Linda Jennifer can you you can send the cookies to me and I'll take care of them if I do end up cookie decorating I may show them I may show them on the other I kind of want to do some videos about my attempt to decorate cookies like, I feel like the vision in my head to decorate cookies is going to be a lot different than the reality if I actually try it out. But I've been watching some YouTube videos, and uh, I feel, I don't know, for some reason, making watching the video, the YouTube videos makes me feel like I could do that. Um, and maybe that's what we get out of, like, sewing YouTube channels, too, is, you know, you see somebody, you're like, oh, I could do that, and then you're like, oh, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Teresa, I started making pillowcases and fabric baskets. Now I'm going more into home decor and maybe venturing into clothing. I'd love to do quilting, but it seems overwhelming. Teresa, I would say it's, I feel like quilting is a lot easier than people think it is or how it looks. Um, in Rasa Leek, you don't have to necessarily make quilts with tiny pieces. Um, and that's the good thing is if you want to try quilting, you can start out with a quilt design 
that is simpler in design. Like you could even do like a strip quilt or something even like, I love those minimalist quilts where there might be a couple smaller blocks, but then a lot of it is that negative space the back with just the background fabric. And then they really make the quilt come to life with the, uh, with the quilting. So there's a lot you can do with quilting. Um, if you are getting into it, maybe try doing some quilted projects first, like placemats or coasters or something that's kind of on the smaller side. So you can see if you like it. And you can, like if you're testing out a block, you could make a couple of those. And if you decide you don't want to make a whole quilt out of it, you can turn those blocks into like pot holders or placemats or pillow or throw pillows. So there's a lot you can do to try out quilting without committing to an entire quilt first. Uh, Rasa Leek, I do bag and clothing sewing, now getting into leather work. Ooh. Uh, Kirsten, does anyone else sew well watching Jennifer? Um, you know, I, I do not, I will say, Kirsten, I do not sew well watching myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming that's how I found her channel. Thank you guys so much. Hopefully my voice doesn't like drive you crazy. Um, and someone else in the comments was like, you say definitely a lot. And I was like, you know, hey, we all have our things. And I think that person, if they tried to make videos of themselves, they would notice there's one or two words that they say over and over again. Uh, like my husband noticed that when he was doing videos or when he's like nervous, he says the word indeed like a thousand times. Um, in fact, so much that apparently our extended relatives started calling him behind his back, Mr. Indeed. Um, so we all have our things, I think our quirks, um, that make us unique, you know? Uh, Linda, you could start out with a mug rug. That is a good suggestion. Um, Amber says, I listen while I sew. Well, I'm very flattered. Uh, I just really, I feel like there's a lot of pressure now because I'm going to be like, I hope I don't say anything really dumb or like my voice doesn't get, like... Because my voice does have the tendency, it can get really high sometimes. And I think I sound like I'm five years old. Um, so that's something I'm working on. Hopefully this microphone helps a little bit. I noticed when I started using this microphone, I feel like my, the voice, I feel like the audio quality definitely got better. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, we got custom fit couture alterations here. Uh, quilting is everywhere. That's why I sew clothing. <laughs> And uh, the Serial Hobbyist Girl, I like that name. I started sewing cloth diapers, uh, made three, then pretty much jumped in clothes, and the rest is history. I have, I have tried one quilting project, and it was okay. I'd like to make a quilt for my son. That would be a good one, especially like baby or like smaller quilts, like lap quilts, are good ones to get started with. And the other thing you can do, like if you're pressed for time, is, and, and if you want to spend the money on this, you can totally pay a long armor to quilt your quilt, which is something I didn't know when I started quilting. I didn't know anything about long arming or that you can just take a quilt top and bring it to someone and pay them to quilt it for you. I had no idea. Um, so that is a really, you know, so if you are pressed for time and you just want to make quilts, um, and also maybe you get like a little nervous about the quilting process, you can take it to a long armor, they can quilt it for you, and then you just have to do the binding. Um, so that does take a lot of time out of it, especially if you're trying to quilt on a domestic machine. You know, this person really can do it a lot faster. And there are some computerized designs. So you know everything's going to be very consistent with the quilting if they use the computerized designs. I'm actually, I've never had a quilt quilted before. I'm interested in just trying it out to see what it's like and to see how the quilt comes back. All right, Amber, the cereal, hot, uh, the cloth diapers were some of my pro first projects too. My first quilt was from my quilt kit, really helped me get it done in a short amount of time, even though I had a bunch of other projects going. Masumi says she started with baby items like burp cloths and tag blankets. I think those are good good ones to get started with. Cereal hobbyist girl, hobbyist girl I'm going to send you a link. You need to see this. Um, one of my favorite bloggers, So Sweetness. She has made clothing out of, uh, out of quilt, like quilt tops, basically. Uh, let me see if I can find them. They look, they look really cool too. So if you want to get inspired, um, definitely, let me see if I can find her outfits. Uh, but Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness, she seriously has some amazing, um, makes, so she basically would take, you know, she makes all kinds of stuff. She's one of my favorite people in the sewing community, but she definitely has made, let me see if I can find a photo. Okay, here's a photo. So she took a quilt. Okay, here we go. She took a quilt top and made it into like a really cool looking circle skirt. Um, so I'll send you the link to this. And she also has made some clothing out of 
quilting cottons that will just knock your socks off. Uh, Kirsten, I just finished hemming another summer dress for my trip to Vietnam in December. Now starting to fit a cropped jacket. That sounds like fun. Um, but yeah, so check out Sarah's make. So if you are, if you do like quilting, but you also like to make clothing, she has totally made some really cool, like that skirt she made is just amazing. Um, so of course that takes a lot of work. Um, so she made, basically made a larger rectangle and then she turned that whole thing into a skirt, a circle skirt. Um, so, so there's some things you can do with, with quilt tops and make them into other things. The other thing you can do is take quilt blocks or take quilted projects and make them into home deck items like throw pillows or uh, bags, pretty much anything. We've got Nisha here from Houston. Serial hobbyist girl, I've been thinking about making the Greenline Studio Tamarack jacket or a Chanel style jacket. They are quilt. Those actually would be cool item, especially, and I, I've seen a few people make that version, make that jacket and do some like quilt blocks in there. It looks really cool. I think that would be awesome. Empress Noel, I adore your husband. Loved the whiskey video. Oh yes, was that the one where he was doing his make, where he was doing his makeup? Um, for a while, he was actually wearing makeup every for uh, like every several. I'll say several times a week. He liked the way it evened out his complexion. I don't know, um, but yeah. So there's a lot of different types of sewing you can get into. Um, I would say, and I don't know. What do you think? If anyone has an opinion, what do you guys think is the easiest form of sewing, and what do you think is the most difficult? In your in your opinion um, I don't know I would say for me I think actually quilting is probably one of the easier forms there's a, obviously you could make very complicated quilts but you can make very simple ones too I think quilting is one of the you know easier ones to get started on I think home deck sewing like making placemats or napkins also very um, beginner friendly I would say if I had to if I had to pick out which one would be most difficult I would definitely put like cosplay reproductive costumes historical stuff the theater like that stuff looks so out of my skill level right now it's not even funny um so i would say those that in my opinion would be the easiest and most difficult but let me know what you think too if you think there's certain ones that are easier or more difficult um ellen can't wait to get my new sewing machine out of layaway quilting embroidery and sewing yay and a uh, serial hobbyist girl, tailoring is hard. Re yes, that, I would agree with you. I think, like, when you look at professional tailors, like the master tailors, I, I have so much respect for what they do and for just the amount of education and the amount of skills those people have. It's just crazy. I wish, I wish I had, like, a tenth of their talent. Got, uh, S. Douglas, easy sewing would be something like a simple tote bag. I, yeah, I would definitely say that. Uh, Kirsten, I think the most difficult are men's tailoring and elaborate bridal. Oh, yes. Yeah, though, and that's probably why they char have to charge so much money is because it's so, it's so labor intensive. And you, again, those are items that are very expensive if you damage them or mess up the item. Oh, boy. All right, we got Masumi. I would love to make costumes. My skills are not there. And you know what, Masumi, that's stuff we can, we can work on over time. Um, maybe someday I'll get there. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, Kate, graffiti, free motion, quilt block sewing is the easiest for me. I, yeah, I would, I would, I'm with you on that one. S. Douglas, I don't ever plan to do real tailoring, just simple clothes. Tailoring does look fun though. Like, especially when you see what goes into jacket, like men's suits. I think the construction process is a true art form. Um, so I wish, I wish I could do something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Love to see. Oh, and I also wanted to share something with you guys that I found. Um, so one of the first sewing machines I had was the uh, Brother SE400, which is a sewing and embroidery machine. At the time, um, my husband actually got it. It was like a little under $400. And I noticed something on the Amazon website today while I was perusing. Brother has come up with an upgraded version called the SE600. And it's cost less than what we paid for the 400. I was like, you've got to be kidding me, right? But they're not. So yeah, so if you are in the market for a sewing machine and have a budget of uh, around, I think it was like, I think on Amazon, it's like 388. Um, it looks like it does have some upgraded features. 
and uh, it looks intriguing. Um, so for me, it says three hundred and eighty-eight dollars. I know sometimes Amazon, and one thing I've I've heard is that Amazon will give different prices to different customers depending on their buying habits. Um, but it's under four hundred dollars, and it does have some improvements upon the uh, the four hundred. It's got a slightly larger throat space. It's got 103 built-in sewing stitches. It also has full color. You can view the embroidery designs in full color. Um, so if you're if you're just getting into embroidery and you want to have those options, this might be a good machine for you to try out. It looks like it's pretty new. Because I was just perusing Amazon to see what was new in arts, craft and, crafts, and sewing. And if I saw any really cool uh, deals, I was going to share them with you. And I saw that, I was like, that's... That's kind of interesting. So they have their uh, so brother has this new machine available, and I'll go over some of the features. It, yeah, it's got a large 3.2 inch uh, LCD touch touch screen display, a four inch by four inch embroidery field, which I believe was the same as the 400. Don't quote me on that one, but it, it seems pretty similar. It's got 80 high quality built in embroidery designs in six lettering fonts, so you could do some monogramming. And I think the price is, is pretty pretty good, uh, under four hundred dollars. Uh, and at the time, I think the I think the four hundred is now like three hundred dollars, and we paid about three three ninety four. So the prices are definitely going down. You can import your own designs. It's got a built in USB port, and uh, and it's got a larger throat space, which I think is cool. And I've noticed the design; they definitely have upgraded. They definitely made the silhouette a little bit different. I think this is a pretty interesting machine. So if that's something that you are looking for, um, it might be that might be something to uh, to look into. But uh, but yeah, so let me and let me show it to you. I can show it to you on the screen. Give me one second. Okay, so sorry, and I'm just trying. So now I've got two computer monitors hooked up, and it's kind of blowing my mind. Okay, so this is the okay. Ah, sorry, I moused over that. Apparently, all right. So this is the this is the brother SE six hundred. Uh, for me, it's showing up as 388 but if you're looking for a new machine and uh, that's in your budget, this may be one checking out. I don't know. It looks it looks interesting, and I had the SE400 for several years. We never had any problems with it. We thought it was a good machine to start off with, um, and it looks very cool. Um, and you get a lot of stuff with it. You get a lot of uh, feet with it. Um, I think the only thing that would make it, especially if you do quilting, is if it came, it would be cool if it came with an extension table. Because some of the brother models do have that, but I do think this this is a very promising looking machine. I've noticed it's definitely competing fairly directly with the uh, price wise with the Everson Sparrow Thirty, which is a little over four hundred dollars. Um, and this one does embroidery, but yeah, I've I've used brother machines. I I think they're pretty solid. So I I don't know. I think this looks interesting, and I I think it's cool that there's uh, another option now for the uh, for the for this line. But yeah, so maybe next week or the week after, maybe I can look for some really good deals. Um, and if you are looking for the lightning deals, um, every day that you can see, you can kind of, like usually around Black Friday, you can see what's coming up. Um, so you can be able to see. So if you are looking for sewing supplies or sewing machines, um, definitely look for, for look for some Amazon deals because they are definitely there and you don't have to leave your house. You can order it in your underwear. You don't really have to worry about uh, you know, going to brave the crowds, and um, I don't really do Black Friday shopping only because it seems like far too stressful to me. Um, so yeah, I, you will not be seeing me out at like a Walmart at midnight. And I notice the stores are opening up at like like I noticed a lot of ads saying they're opening up at six p.m. on Thanksgiving. Shouldn't you be eating dinner with your family at that time? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I right, got a couple more comments, so we will let's get to those. And yeah, I know this show, guys, I know this show's been a little random, so thank you for, for sticking with me today. Um, this has been a lot of fun, and we've had some live, very lively conversation. Alright, so we'll go back to the comments now. We've got a few more. We've got, a. Uh, okay, Tony, I have to say that if you are interested in tailoring, read and try. You can only learn by trying and practicing. Um, Nisha, quilting is easier and garment sewing is more challenging. Nisha, that's exactly where I am. I started quilting and just love it. I have tried getting into garment sewing. It doesn't work out very well. Nisha, I would say try some, e try some very easy confidence builder patterns first. Um, also try working with woven fabrics, especially since you're used to quilting cotton. You know, maybe try some quilting cotton and make like a, uh, 
you know, make make like a gathered skirt. That might be a good first project and one that won't drive you crazy, maybe. Uh, she also says she bought an embroidery machine from the Houston Quilt Festival. All right, so you, and how was the Houston Quilt Festival? It looked like a lot of fun. I saw some pictures from Quilt Market, some really amazing booths there, and I also saw a lot of photos from the festival. Looked like a lot of fun. Zena, I'm having trouble with sewing garments because of the fitting issues. Not many patterns are in my size, and so I'm limited to what I can make. Zena, that is always a challenge. Um, I don't know what kind of body type you have. Um, but one thing that was recommended to me when I was getting into it was to buy patterns where the designer has a body shape similar to you because every, you know, they were saying that designers generally design with themselves in mind. You know, like for me, um, I noticed the Greenland Studio patterns fit me very well. And also the Tilly Buttons pattern sizing is really good for me too. And uh, the McCall's Butterick and uh, Vogue patterns are, have been really pretty spot on as well. Um, but again, we all have very different shapes and sizes and everything else. Um, so what works for me may not work exactly for you. Uh, we've got uh, Teresa embroidery. It looks like it would be so much fun. You know, I've tried a little bit of hand embroidery and it is fun. The machine embroidery too, like the machines can be kind of pricey. Uh, Brother seems to have a pretty good lineup and they also have a website called iBroidery where you can download a bunch of designs like they've got Disney, Star Wars. I think they've got, they've got like the license for all those things. Um, so you can definitely, I, I like the idea of having a brother machine because it seems like you have a lot of design options. And uh, I've, I'm also really interested in doing monogramming. Um, there was one embroidery machine, I think it's like the PE770. That one looks pretty, pretty good. And I think the price is only like six or $700, which for an embroidery only machine is actually pretty good. Um, all right, we've got Sterling. I have a burning of 570. Woo, oh, that's, you're fancy Sterling and you're only 13. All right. Uh, how, all right, custom fit couture alterations. How easy is it to learn how to sew that type of machine? How to sew that type of machine without a dealer? Um, I, are you talking about the Brother SE uh, 400? I found it real, if, if you are, I found it very easy to understand. And I think there's, there were, for that model, there were a lot of YouTube videos where people had been reviewing it and also sharing tips. So, when I'm looking for sewing machines, if, it, if there's a lot of video tutorials or video help, um, that does tend to be a factor in my decision. Uh, Teresa, I cross-stitch. I think it would be fun. You know, Teresa, I think you should go for the embroidery. Empress Noel, lightning deals are my downfall. Me too. Last year, okay, so last year I bought a few things that some of them were worked out well, others not so much. So my lightning deals last year were um, I got a pretty decent garment steamer which I have been using to get wrinkles out of stuff. You can also use it in sewing, like if you have like a sample or a piece of clothing and just want to steam it real quick. I got the steamer for 35 bucks, and I think the original price was like 50 or $60. That was a pretty good deal. I also got one of those like plug-in heated hair brushes. That thing was crap. Like it was all, maybe I'll show it to you next week. This thing, I think I got it for 10 or $12. It, my hair is very thick. And it just did not, it really did not work out well. And I, I think I used it once and that was it. So some of the lightning deals, I find that I, I don't know, you just get sucked in it. And you're like, this would be cool to have. And then you get it and you're like, this is not, this is not what I was expecting. This does not work. I do not want it. Um, so I do buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. I bought, um, I, I, I've told this in a previous live show, but my husband and I bought our original wedding rings off of Amazon. Good, very good deals. Um, in fact, the wedding ring I bought, which rolled under like the fridge or something, so I had to get a different one. I ended up getting a new, my husband gifted me a new one for Christmas a couple years ago. Uh, but the first one was only like 30 bucks or something, and I think it's still available on Amazon. So Amazon jewelry is pretty legit in my opinion. Uh, Teresa, I won't shop at a store for Black Friday if they're open on Thanksgiving. I'm all about spending time with your family on the holidays. I'm with you. It does seem like we're getting to the point where that just seems insane to me. Even if you're not really into the holidays, why would you want to spend your Thanksgiving night camped outside like a Best Buy or something? I don't, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, so, but you know, and obviously working in news, like every year, like your story on Thanksgiving was the Black Friday people camped out. 
and you would typically just go to whatever store had the most people outside like like the crew would drive around and try to find like whoever had the most uh like my first job was in el paso texas so there weren't a lot of options for getting black friday shoppers uh especially not like a few days ahead um, but the be there was a Best Buy and, like, a Target, so those were the two places that people actually were camped out the night before, and that's where the reporter would go and, like, do her live shots in the morning. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, there was? I remember la a couple years ago, these, like, and we see this every year, someone camps out, like, a week ahead of time. All right, here's my opinion. For the amount of money you're saving on the Black Friday deals... How do you have that amount of time? Like, if you're using, if you have a job and you're using your vacation time, it can't add up to the savings from, like, buying some TVs at, like, Best Buy. Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, the people that camp out, like, a week ahead. Like, I know you're probably, they're probably doing it as, like, a fun experience and to get on TV, because obviously they, those are the, always the people that you see on TV are the ones in the tents that are throwing footballs around and have, like, an Xbox set up out there. It's just not my thing. And now that, like, there's places like Amazon that are offering all these Cyber Monday deals. Oh, also, a few years ago, um, make sure to watch out for Fabric.com. Their Black... I think it was their Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale. They had a lot of fabrics for, like, I think it was $1.99 a yard. So you can... So a lot of these online places are trying to compete, and they're having some really good prices on fabric. So if you're trying to look for some fabric, which currently I'm not, so I will probably not really be doing any Black Friday shopping. But if I see any really good deals, I'm going to try to point them your your way. Um, maybe I'll share them on Facebook in between the live shows. So if I see any really cool sewing deals or sewing and quilting deals, um, I'll definitely share links on Facebook. So if you don't follow me there, you're welcome to. Um, and then maybe maybe we'll do some hot hot stuff I find on Amazon. I also kind of want to do a video on the other channel, just like really weird stuff on it. There's so much weird stuff on Amazon. Yeah, like I can't even, like, all right, today's deal of the day is like a Wi-Fi pet camera um, and a Butterball fryer. Okay, the Butterball fryer makes sense. Um, some of the things on Amazon, you're like, who, you wonder who is buying this stuff? Like, are there like, like one of the deals today is a Himalayan glow pink crystal lamp i don't know i've never thought to myself hey i really need one of those i don't know um there's also some okay these led lights are kind of cute though all right so we got a couple more comments uh masumi i bought the book the perfect fit to try to figure out how to do pattern changes based on my measurements hoping it goes well i wish you luck masumi i i know that's that's a that struggle is real though trying to alter the pattern and make those changes it can be very very frustrating uh, if you have fitting issues, try the free La Kayla. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I've heard a lot of people talking about that company. I need to try it one of these days just to see what my own experience is like. Um, but I'm very curious. Ellen, I'm getting the NS2750D. It was $2,700 on sale for $1,599. Oh, that's a good deal. Did you buy it from your local dealer? Did you get it online? That's awesome. Empress Noel, I am the awkward body type olive from Popeye Cartoons. Lol. I've learned a lot watching YouTube videos about fit. That's the good thing about sewing is that a lot of us are, a lot of people are creating content to help each other. Um, so I feel like this is a very generous community. So that's, again, that's one thing I really appreciate about it is that people are always willing to, people are always willing to help you. All right, uh, Black Friday isn't what it used to be for, that is, like, I don't understand, I don't understand what Black Friday has become. I don't. I have no desire to go to a shopping mall on a busy day. I don't even like going to stores on the weekends. I like to do my shopping at really off-peak times. Like, I've noticed really late at night on a weekday or really early. Like, if you go, like, to a grocery store at 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, it's probably not going to be very busy. Uh, I'm, I, I'm very averse to crowds, so I will probably not be doing anything. Although, my, we had a thought. I think it would be kind of funny if I went... If I camped out for Black Friday and then didn't buy anything or I bought something super lame like batteries or something, I think that would make kind of a funny vlog. I don't know. I was thinking about that, but then I, the, the other thought that crossed my mind was, but then I would have to camp out for Black Friday and I don't really want to do that. But if I knew going in that I wasn't going to buy anything, I feel like the pressure would be off. Um, all right, uh, Kirsten, I've tried the LaKayla patterns. They are a little better, but still requires fitting. Okay. Uh, Empress Noel, I just bought the Himalayans. Okay, so Empress Noel, what, 
I've seen these lamps before. What is the what is the benefit for the Himalayan salt lamps? Like I've seen these all over the place, and I still don't understand it. They look sort of cool. I, I will give them that. It looks kind of neat. I'm just not really sure. Like I'm just not like the kind of person that's usually into that sort of thing. Like I don't buy candles or like like incense or like wax melts. So stuff like that is usually just not on my radar. But some of the, I swear, some of the stuff on Amazon is so, like, strange or, like, out there that I don't understand. I don't understand who's buying it. I don't know. All right, uh, Ellen, she got her sewing machine from a brother dealer. That's awesome. And, you know, I, and, you know I've been pretty good. I haven't really eaten the popcorn because I, I, I didn't want people to be able to hear me chewing on this thing. So, but I still have it. Uh, so, anyways, I'm very curious to see what... I'm very curious to see what kind of deals Amazon has for Black Friday. Um, this has been a really cool show, though. Um, even though we, we definitely got off the rails. I think, you know what, and I do think uh, to uh, Sterling Sutherland, thank you for bringing up the Craftsy topic. I think that was good to talk about. Um, and now knowing, I guess we'll find out in 2018 how much that thing is. Oh, and this is kind of interesting. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Amazon... I guess they're trying to get people to buy crafting supplies because uh, now they are like, hold on one second, because now they are, oh, they've got like a, like a crafting blog now. This is kind of interesting. I don't know if this is new. I'm sure all these projects require you to have, to buy stuff off of Amazon. Okay, like magical nightlights. Okay, that is sort of cute, and I, I am kind of interested in those LED lights, I'm going to be honest. Although, what is that blue thing she's putting in there? Okay, is she putting tissue paper in there? Okay, so I guess they're like, and, and I guess these things are battery operated. Okay, oh, and down below, of course, they've got all the uh, supplies you need to buy. I think that's interesting, you know. I guess the more people you get into crafting, the more stuff you can sell them off of Amazon, right? That looks kind of interesting. Okay, I want to... Let's look at another one. Do they have any sewing projects? What And what is... Okay, so we've got cards. We've got Halloween pumpkins. I saw something that said couch... Couch refresh? Okay, see, so are they really telling you to paint a couch? Oh, they are. I've seen a few blog posts like... Okay. Wow. Okay, this, this Amazon blog is seriously telling you to put painter's tape, and then paint, spray paint your couch. That's pretty brave. I mean, I guess if you have a couch that you really don't care about, that would work, I guess. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. And I guess the tape is specific, or the paint is instant fabric color interior upholstery spray. I'm, that's very curious. I'm very curious about that. Like, does that actually work? Would the paint rub off on you? I don't know. Is it, how color fast is that? I don't know. I don't know if I would trust that to spray paint upholstery. I don't know. And there's no reviews. So, oh, wait. The squeezy version has, all right, it only has three and a half stars. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm looking for stuff on Amazon, I don't buy anything unless it has, I don't usually buy anything unless it has at least four stars and it's got more than like two reviews. That's kind of crazy. All right, we've got Empress Noel, okay, so she's got an answer about the Himalayan salt lamps. Uh, it puts positive ions in the air and helps with allergies and sleeping. The best part is the gorgeous glow. Okay, you know what? I'll give that to you. The positive, positive ions. Who doesn't need a little posi positive ions in the air and allergies? That's cool. All right, we've got Tiffany here. Welcome, Tiffany. I've gotten into making muslins first before I cut into my fabric. It takes time, but it works. Exactly. I guess if you if you take the time to make a muslin then at least you know you're not screwing up your good fabric. And you used old bed sheets. You go Tiffany. All right, uh, we got Misumi. I sew with mostly knit, so my muslin is just cheaper knit. Does anyone else use something different? You know, that seems pretty... I, I've i actually done the same thing. I'll use, like, cheap knits too. Especially because knit fabric... Like, I guess I'm trying to think of a... You know, I guess if you wanted to maybe try to go the go to the thrift store and find like really cheap, maybe extra large sweatshirts or something that's a knit fabric, that would be a good muslin. You just have to buy something that's like way bigger than you are, like maybe a men's stuff. All right, Sterling, we all know those bloggers, just a different, yeah, exactly. 
like some of these Pinterest projects, you know, you're like, wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's not going to turn out well. Um, Empress Noel, I use t-shirt sheets from a, okay, that's a good one. Okay, so Misumi, that's a good suggestion from Empress Noel using those t-shirt sheets like the jersey kind. They were easy to find on sale for my first time using knits. Okay, that's a good, okay, I like that. Misumi also, I don't have any clothes that I don't wear to use as a muslin. I did KonMari. You know, and KonMari is something that I, I, I clearly don't practice, but it's something that I probably should. I know we've talked about that before. It looks cool. I just haven't gotten myself to do it yet. Um, but yeah, so this, some of these projects look, I'm going to say, I'm going to say interesting. Um, so I guess Amazon is trying to get us to, to craft some stuff. But I swear, painting, I don't know about this whole painting your couch. I don't know about this whole painting your, I don't, would it, st my question, would it stand up to the test of time? I don't know. All right, let's see one of their other cowhide floor cushion tutorial. Okay, some of these look really hokey. I don't know. What? Okay, so you get cow upholstery fabric. Is that real cow? Or is that like synthetic? I'm gonna guess this is... I don't know. So this is like an actual sewing project. I'm just curious to see if this is ag real. Okay, oh, it's polyester. Okay, so this is not actual... Okay, so this is not real cow. It's just like fake cowhide. Okay. I was gonna say for $17.98 that actually seems pretty cheap if that was real cowhide. Okay, so this is sort of a sewing project is there okay, so basically you just have to sew some rectangles. Make okay. So this one's making I don't know a cowhide floor. I've never personally thought to myself I really need one of those. It looks sort of cool. Um, although the price of this, I'm going to assume you need several yards of that fabric. And here's another thing. So this, this tutorial doesn't even, okay, does it tell you how, all right, this, this tutorial doesn't really tell you how much fabric you need. Um, so it'd be kind of nice if they put a, it would be sort of nice if they put the fabric requirements in there so you know how much of that 1798 fabric to buy. That, that's kind of, that's a pretty expensive project though. That definitely looks like several yards of fabric. And there's a lot of other materials too. So that doesn't look very caught. That doesn't really look very budget friendly to me. I don't know. All right, this is a US map quilt from Amazon. Uh, yes, because we all want to get our sewing and quilting tutorials from Amazon, right? Uh, this US map quilt is perfect to take along on a road trip. It's covered with the fun map of the US. No, no crap, you know. All applique in scrappy, colorful prints. You could even add a little line of embroidery to remember your trip by, or decorate the map with little hearts for places you visited. Could be a fun gift for someone who likes to travel. All right, so they got... Okay, so do they have a... Okay, it looks like they... I'm assuming they have a template? Okay, okay, so you can download a template. Okay. All right, that looks... That all looks kind of interesting. Okay, so... Our Empress Noel, Ikea sells real cow hides. I grew up on a ranch, no thank. And yeah, that's the thing, like, I don't... Alright, here's my... I, I've seen those cow hide rugs at Ikea. You know, I don't... You know, I don't have a problem. I mean, they're bio... I guess they're at least they're environmentally friendly. I just... I wonder about cleaning those things. Like, cleaning it does not look very easy or convenient. I don't know. So, who knows. But this, uh... Okay, so this map... It, this is very, uh, is it just me or does it feel kind of weird to see sewing tutorials on Amazon.com? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, here's another one of their tutorials. A. Okay, it looks like they just kind of asked other bloggers to use their stuff to me. Okay, yeah. Okay, this is, this is from Fabric.com. And if you're not aware, Fabric.com is owned by Amazon. So the Fabric.com, okay, so at least they're kind of repurposing some some material here i guess so i don't know these this is kind of this feels like a strange world we live in now i don't know sorry this show has really gotten off the rails and if you are still watching or have made it to the end of this show and you're watching it live or on the replay um yeah hopefully ho please come back next week uh hopefully it won't be this crazy uh, although i don't really know what we're going to talk about next week so if you have a suggestion please let me know all right oh back to the magic nightlight one I don't know how I think about these. They seem, some of these seem okay. Some of these, eh, I don't know. I think you could take it or leave it. 
You know what, Misumi, I think the US map quilt looks cute. I think for me it's just weird seeing it on Amazon. That Amazon is making tutorials. Okay, this is, there's a yoga bag. Okay. Also, they recommend using a Singer Fashion Mate sewing machine. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Okay. Anyway, sorry to take you guys in this internet wormhole. Um, let me, let me, let me stop sharing my computer screen. But this has been a lot of fun, and uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. I'm going to try to eat the rest of this popcorn. Um, you know, it's still, it's still good, I think. And then, okay, so... I somehow, this has nothing to do with sewing, but I will share it anyways. Um, so I started watching this Dateline. The, I, I don't know if you guys watched the show Snapped on Oxygen, but I'm, I'm a fan. I'm straight up a fan. And I saw, I randomly saw these clips on YouTube from Dr. Phil. I don't watch the Dr. Phil show normally, but it was recommended to me because I watched a few of those Cash Me Outside, you know, girl videos. So I guess there was this, uh, there were these couples in Idaho and one of them, like they were had, there was some sort of affair and then one of their husbands killed the other one. And I was like, this is crazy. So on the Dr. Phil show, they ended up meeting, like the wife met the mistress and it was really interesting. Um, so I started watching the Dateline special about these people and it is insane. So anyways, let me, I'll share the link if you're interested. Um, so after I finish the show, um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna watch this, I'm gonna finish watching this Dateline special, uh, about crazy couples. Alright. So anyways, if you are into, like, the true crime stuff, or, like, the Snap, the show Snapped is, like, one of the hokiest slash best shows ever, especially when they've got, like, that intro with, like, the pearls and stuff, and then it's, like, you know, like, and then they're, like, they moved to this quiet town in Idaho and little did you know like that sort of I just love the narrator and it's just such a it's it's a fun show to watch even though it probably it, it kind of makes you wonder like I mean it pro I probably wouldn't watch it with your spouse or boyfriend or you know partner because it might scare the crap out of them um sort of like watching like Fatal Attraction but it's it's kind of interesting um the other show that I'm really into is called BuzzFeed Unsolved it's like Unsolved Mysteries but it's a lot less PG rated. Um, and that one I'm also kind of into. Uh, Kirsten, are you doing another year without buying clothes? Kirsten, the answer is yes. Um, and if you're wondering, I haven't really needed to wear socks that often. So I'm, I'm okay with that. So I still haven't tried to make a bra yet. That's on the list for 2018. And later on in the year, I'm, I actually have a new, um, I have a new mission for 2018 that hopefully I'll share before the end of the year. But I'm not going to stop uh, not buying clothes. I'm going to continue just not buying any clothes. Uh, but I'm adding a new, I'm adding kind of a new um, angle to it as well. So anyways, thank you guys for sticking with me. This has been fun. Uh, Couture custom sewing goals for 2018. You know, that's a good show. Maybe we could do that for a show topic. And then maybe at that time I'll announce my own 2018 goal. Um... Because uh, it's been a lot of fun, and and that's the thing. Doing this has made me realize that you really don't need that many. And and soon I'm gonna make a few personal announcements on the channel. But um, this whole the last few months have really gotten me thinking that I don't need that much stuff. Like the less stuff I have, I feel like I'm happier and not having the stress of. Or, spending money or wasting money on stuff I don't need like last year with that stupid hairbrush the heated hairbrush um it kind of just the when you have to when you have to like inventory all your things you really start to realize how much of it you don't you never needed and you shouldn't have spent the money on and then you start to feel bad about yourself you're like wow how much money did I waste buying heated hairbrushes and you know I don't know all this other random junk um, so next year is definitely going to be one for me of minimalism more. Um, so I'm really excited about that and also saving, saving money. Um, so I will definitely, that will definitely be, that's kind of part of the equation is, uh, is living on a budget. Um, and that's definitely something on the personal channel, Gen Talks Forever, I'm going to be doing some videos about, about that sort of thing. 
Um, because we are, you know, my husband and I do like to live frugally. We don't, um, like for instance, I drive a 10 year old car with a missing hubcap. So, you know, like those types of things just aren't important to me. I, I just, I love sewing. So I want to do that more. And I think it's more important to have time with people and also being able to cultivate your relationships and also living well. So I think living well, I think there's a big difference between living living with a lot of stuff or living and spending a lot of money and living more well living well and more intentionally and that's where I'm trying to go I'm not perfect um, I have you know I've got days where I'm not very good at it and I think that's something that it's just something we can all kind of strive for and all try to uh try to to aspire to all right, we've got a couple more comments we got I'm assuming no no clothes buying for me and also custom fit couture and uh Sterling Sutherland, nice seeing you here, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. And thank you so much for the uh, for the craftsy stuff. But so yeah, I think maybe maybe next week or the week after we could talk about. Actually, let's save the sewing goals for December. All right, so I have to figure out some. T maybe next week we'll talk about some Amazon deals. Also, we can look at some more crazy stuff on that blog because that was pretty interesting. Um, Cheryl, I say those so shows could probably teach you how to get away with murder. Why I don't watch them. I've watched a few snap shows, and that is why I think it can be a teaching moment. I feel, I, you know what, that's true. And you, have you noticed those women always make some mistake? Like, all right, whenever someone tries to hire a hitman, they're always an undercover police officer. So that teaches me that you definitely, if, if that was a road you were going down, um, you should probably not try to hire a hitman because they're probably going to be a cop. And also, like, they always, like, like a lot of these shows are like, it's like, it's like a uh, wife shoots a husband in their bedroom or something, and then, you know, she says it was self-defense, but there's some things that don't add up. I don't know. It's very interesting, and it's kind of... It, when you look at different cases, especially in different states, there's different laws, and, you know, their justice system is definitely... They definitely differ from state to state, but you can kind of see, like, in certain situations, um, you know someone's found guilty and then other people are acquitted and sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense i don't know uh, cheryl i'm trying to make all my clothes unfortunately i have a hernia i'm so sorry oh my gosh uh, my that is hindering my ability to make them fit right now May, you know cheryl you take care of yourself i'm sorry to hear that i will definitely be praying for you and your recovery though wow so hopefully and is your surgery coming up if so i wish you the best um, maybe, and if you don't like watching Snapped, hopefully that is not on in the hospital and you can watch some, watch something a little more up, uplifting. Um, but yeah, Snapped is a show where it's, it's definitely not like an up, it's definitely not an upbeat kind of topic. I don't know. All right. Or use the internet to find, yeah, use the, and that's the thing, like these people always make like stupid mistakes. Like, she would have gotten away with it if she hadn't used a credit card to purchase gasoline, you know, or something like that. Like, they always do things that are just, like, they do other things okay. It's part of the aspect of their crime. They tackle, you know, fairly, you know, in a way that would actually help them to get away with it. But then there's always one or two things that they just, you know, just don't, don't add up or leads them to them as a suspect. I don't know. I'm assuming we love the conversation. Thank you for the videos. And thank you guys for staying with me, even though this, this show is definitely, uh, this, this show has definitely been one of the more random ones. But, you know, I have a lot of fun. And Cheryl, good luck to you with your hernia. I really hope that goes away. You don't need that in your life right now. Because, you know what, it's, yeah, you don't need anything to get in the way of your sewing. So, anyways, I hope you guys all have a good afternoon. Um, my husband's playing video games while I do this. But he did, he was nice enough to let me use this microphone because he normally uses this for gaming. So it was very generous of him not to, not to demand it back right away. Um, so I'm going to go and I'll see you guys next week. I got to, got to figure out what topic. Maybe we'll talk about some Black Friday stuff or some holiday shopping type stuff. So maybe we can do that. All right, guys, I will see you next week and uh, you all have a happy Sunday. And I hope if you, if you are preparing for Thanksgiving, I hope everything is going well. Um, I don't, my husband's sort of the cook in the family, so he's probably going to be the one to, uh, if we have Thanksgiving dinner, he's probably going to be the one to actually end up doing that. Uh, but anyways, guys, have a good week.